In this video, we're going to look at the normal probability density function. Initially, our work will focus on the standard normal, and then in later videos, we'll look at other normal distributions and convert them to the standard normal. Let's start off with defining Z, and I'm going to use a capital letter for Z, to be a continuous random variable that follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and a variance of 1. This is the standard normal distribution. So we've got now a random variable z, which follows a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. The graph below shows the standard normal curve. So we've got a mean of 0 and a variance of 1. And as you can see, it's symmetric about 0. Normal distributions can model many situations such as volume, height, weight and so on. And in general, they will have a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. One other key feature of this graph is that the area trapped under the curve is equal to 1. That allows us to use the function to find probabilities. So let's take some value, and I'm going to call this value z, and I'm going to use a lowercase z. So let's just put up here, this is going to now be z. So if we put on now the graph, here is z. We can say that the probability of my random variable, which is capital Z, being less than the observed value of lowercase z is equal to the area trapped under the curve to the left of this line. So the probability that this continuous random variable z is less than the observed value we've got here of z is equal to the area trapped under the curve. Usually to find an area we would integrate. The integral to find this area is really quite complex and certainly beyond the scope of the course. Instead, what we do is use a standard normal and the tables associated with the standard normal. Often they're called Z tables, and all we do is find our value and read off. So let's give Z a value. Let's say that Z here, this lowercase Z, is equal to 1.2. So what we want to find is the probability that our random variable Z is less than 1.2. If in a textbook or exam question you see the probability of z being less or equal to 1.2, these things are interchangeable. The probability that it's actually 1.2 is 0, so therefore these mean the same thing. When we look this value up in our table, we will find that it will give us phi of 1.2. Phi of z gives us the area trapped under the curve to the left of z and that gives us our probability. So let's look at our table and find that value. So here's our table. So what we chose then is 1.2. So phi of 1.2 is 0 0.8849. So let's put that in. So 0, 0 0.8849. Or if you want to read that, the probability that z is less than 1.2 is going to be around 88 and a half percent. So that is using the standard normal table to find the probability that a random variable z is less than an observed value. If we just look at this table and look at some of the key features, right here, this is saying the probability that z is less than one standard deviation above the mean is 0 0.8413. So around 84% um, that it will be ab uh, below one standard deviation above the mean. This one here, 97.72% that it will be less than two standard deviations above the mean. In later videos, we'll look at working with certain um, examples using the standard deviation. So let's go on and work through a couple of these. In the questions, often you'll be asked to do something fairly straightforward. If it's slightly harder, having a sketch will always help. So what we've got here, we want to find in the first part the probability that z is less than 2.12. So what we're going to do then is draw a line up, and we'll put this point just here. So what we're trying to find now is the area trapped under the curve to the left of 2.12. So here's 2.12. I want the probability that z, our random variable, is less than 2.12. So what we need to do is look up in the table phi of 2.12. This will give us the area trapped under the curve and therefore the probability. So let's grab up our table. And by the way, you don't have to learn these tables, you'll be glad to know. Um, 
they will be provided in either your textbook or an exam. So what we want then is phi of 2.12, which is 0 0.9830. So this is going to give us now 0 0.9830, or roughly 98%. So the probability that Z is less than 2.12 is going to be 0 0.9830. Eight three zero, so pretty high. Okay, so that's that one done. If we now look at the next one, the probability that Z is less than one point three six. So let's put that line up, and we will put that just about here. Okay, so the probability that Z is less than that, um, it'll probably be slightly too. Let's just move it slightly this way, uh, and it will look something like so. So this point is going to be. Okay, we'll just have to do that then. If it doesn't want to do what I want it to do, this is going to be 1.36. Okay, so what we'll have is this part right here. So remember from the table, phi of 1.36, and we can write that there, phi of 1.36 will give us now the probability that Z is less than that value. So let's find that. Where's 1.36? Okay, so there we go, 9131. So what we've got then is 0. 0.9131. You'll see all of these values are given to four significant figures and you will quote those unless otherwise stated. Okay, right. Here's one that's slightly more interesting. Um, okay, we need to, we don't want the line on there. Let's go for this one instead. So what we want now is the probability that Z is greater now than 0 0.84. At the start of the video, I explained that the area trapped under the curve is 1 and it's symmetric. If we now think about this line right here, and we will call and we'll put it just here, this is going to be the line 0 0.84. So we've got now 0 0.84. If I look up in my table phi of 0 0.84, what we will have is the area trapped under the curve to the left. So if I look at this value phi of 0 0.84, we will get this area right here. I want it the other side. I want to find the probability that Z is greater than that. So it's this part right here. We know the area trapped under the curve in total equals 1. Therefore, this area is going to be 1 minus phi of 0 0.84. So let's look that up in the table. So where's 0 0.84? Just there. So 7, double nine, five. So what we need to do is 1 minus 0 0.7995, which is going to give me 0 0.2005. So the probability Z is greater than 0 0.84 is 1 minus the probability of it being less than 0 0.84. So there we go, nice and straightforward and logical. Right, let's move on. And now what we need to find is the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.38. In terms of where you look at this, and when we do later videos, I'm going to present this in many different ways. What we'll do is put on our curve now negative 0 0.38. We want the probability to be less than this value. The way I like to look at this now is to go around the other side of the curve. That may seem a bit strange to you, and you might just prefer a little algorithm to remember this. But the way I like to think about this now is if I went around the other side, what would I see? And what I would see now is the standard normal curve, and I would have this point now, and this point right here would be 0 0.38, and that would be positive. So what I could do now is look at phi of 0 0.38 phi of 0 0.38 is going to give me now the area trapped under the curve to the left of that. As you can see, that area is this. That's what I would find. Therefore, if we want to find the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.38, all we need to do is 1 minus phi of 0 0.38. In general, if we want to find phi of minus k, let's just put minus k in there, this is equal to 1 minus phi of k. So if you want to look at it like that, you can do. That's a nice little algorithm. But if you just want to think about what would it look like from the other side, and by symmetry, we just find the missing part. So let's find now phi 
of 0 0.38. So where are we? Uh, there we go, 6480. So what we need then is 1 minus 0 0.6480. So what's that going to leave me? That's going to leave me 0 0.3520, uh, 3, isn't it? So the probability that Z is less than negative 0 0.38 is going to give us this value. In subsequent videos, I'm going to introduce this many different ways. Often you might not see it that way, which is perfectly fine. You might want to just look at this basic idea that phi of minus k is equal to 1 minus 5k. And then we will look at using a range of different techniques. But hopefully that's been a, a good brief intro to finding probabilities using the standard normal curve.